So in this video, um, I'm going to show you some basic Docker commands. At the beginning, I'm going to explain what the difference between container and image is, because that's something a lot of people confuse, then very quickly go through version and tag, and then show you a demo of how to use the basic Docker commands. Um, commands that will be enough to pull an image locally, to start a container, to configure a container, and even debug the container. So with that said, let's get started. So what is the difference between container and image? Mostly people use those terms interchangeably, but actually there is a fine difference between the two. Um, to see theoretically, image is just the part of a container runtime. So container is the running environment for an image. So as you see in this graphic, the application image that runs the application it could be Postgres, Redis, some other application um, needs, let's say, a file system where it can save the log files um, or where it can store some configuration files. It also needs some env environmental configuration like um, environmental variables and so on. So all of this environmental stuff are provided by container and container also has a port that is binded to it, uh, which makes it possible to talk to the application which is running inside of a container. And of course, it should be noted here that the file system is virtual in the con container. So the con container has its own abstraction of an operating system, including the file system and the environment, which is of course different from the file system and environment of the host machine. So in order to see the difference between container and image in action, let's head over to the Docker Hub and find, uh, for example, a Redis image. Um, another thing is that Docker Hub, all the artifacts that are in the Docker Hub are images. So we're not talking about containers here. All of these things are images, Docker official image. So we're going to go ahead and pull a Redis image out of the Docker Hub to my laptop. So you see the different layers of the image are downloaded. And this will take a couple of minutes. So once the download is complete, I can check all the existing images on my laptop using Docker images command. So I see I have two images, Redis and Postgres with the uh, text, image IDs and so on. Um, another important aspect of images is that uh, they have tags or versions. So for example, if we go back to the Docker Hub, each, one, each image that you look up in the Docker Hub uh, will have many different versions. The latest is always the one that you get when you don't specify the version, of course. Um, but if you have a dependency um, on a specific version, you can actually choose the version you want and specify it. And you can select one from here. So this is what you see here. The tag is basically the version of the image. So I just downloaded the latest and I can also see the size of the image. So now to this point, we have only worked with images. There is no container involved and there is no Redis running. So now if, let's say I need Redis running so that my application can connect to it. I'll have to create a container of that Redis image that will make it possible to connect to the Redis application. And I can do it by running the Redis image. So if I say docker run Redis, this will actually start the image in a container. So as I said before, container is a running environment of an image. So now if I open a new tab and do docker ps, I will get status of all the running docker containers. So I can see the container Redis is running with a container ID based on the image of Redis and some other information about it. For example, the port that it's running on and so on. 
So as you see here, the docker run redis command will start the redis container in the terminal um, in an attached mode. So for example, if I were to terminate this with the control C, you see that redis application stops and the container will be stopped as well. So if I do docker ps again, I see that no container is running. Um, so there is an option for docker run command that make, makes it able, makes it possible to run the container in a detached mode and that is minus D. So if I do docker run minus D redis, I will just get the ID of the container as an output and the con container will stop running. So if we check again docker ps, I see the container with the ID starting with 838, which is the same thing here, is running. So this is how you can start it in a detached mode. Um, now, for example, if you would want to restart a container because, um, I don't know, some uh, the application crashed inside or some error happened, so you want to restart it, um, you would need the doc container ID. So just the first part of it, not the whole string. And you can simply say docker stop ID of the container and that will stop the docker container. Nothing running. If you want to start it again, you can use the same ID to start again. So let's say you stop docker container um, at the end of the day. You go home, you come back the next day, open your laptop, and you want to restart the stopped container, right? So if you do docker ps, there is, uh, the output is empty, you don't see any containers. So what you can do, alternative to just looking up your history, command line history, is you can do docker ps minus a, which will show you all the containers which uh, are running or not running. So here you see the container ID again, and you can restart it. Okay, so let's try another thing. Um, let's say you have uh, two parallel applications that both use Redis, but in different versions. So you would need two Redis containers with different image versions um, running on your laptop, right? At different times maybe, or at the same time. Um, so, so here we have the latest one, which is Redis 506. And let's head over to the Docker Hub and select uh, version. Let's say you need version 4.0. Um, so remember the first time that we downloaded the Redis image, we did Docker pull Redis. Um, however, if you run Docker, if you use Docker run with Redis image and the tag, which was 4.0, it will pull the image and start the container um, right away after it. So it does two commands basically in one. So it's Docker pull that Docker start in one command. So if I do this, it says it can't find the image locally. So it goes and pulls the image from the repository to my laptop. And again, we see some layers are downloaded and the container is started right away. And now if I do Docker PS, you see that I have two Redis's running. So this is where it gets interesting. Now, how do you actually use any container that you just started? So in this output, we, you also see the ports section, which specifies on which port the container is listening to the incoming requests. So both containers open the same port, which is what was specified in the image. So in the logs of the container, you can see the information running modes and loan port 6379. So how does that actually work? And how do we not have conflicts while both are running on the same port? 
So to explain that, let's head over to our slide and see how this works. As you know, container is just a virtual environment running on your host and you ha can have multiple containers uh, running simultaneously on your host, which is your laptop, PC, whatever you're working on. And your laptop has certain po ports available that you can open for certain applications. So how it works is that you need to create a so-called binding between a port that your laptop, your host machine has and the container. So for example, in the first container part here, you see container is listening on port 5000 and you bind your laptop's port 5000 to that containers. Now you will have conflict if you open two 5000 ports on your host because you will get a message, the port is already bound or is already in use, you can do that. Um, however, you can have two containers, as you see in the second and third containers are both listening on port 3000, which is absolutely okay, as long as you bind them to two different ports from your host machine. So once the port binding between the host and the container is already done, you can actually connect to the running container using the port of the host. So in this example URI, you would have some app, local host, and then the port of the host. Um, and the host then will know how to forward the request to the container using the port binding. So if we head back, here you see that containers have their ports and they're both running on the same one. However, we haven't made any binding between my laptop's port and the container port. And because of that, the container is basically unreachable by any application, so I won't be able to use it. So the way we actually do that is by specifying the binding of the ports during the run command. So I'm gonna break this and check that there is just one container running now. I'm gonna stop the other one as well so we can start the menu. Okay, so we see both containers are here. So now we want to start them using the binding between the host and the container ports. But again, we have two redises, so we need to bind them to two different ports on my laptop. So the way to do it is you do docker run and you specify with minus p the port of the host. That's the first one. So let's go with 6000. It doesn't really matter in this case. And the second one is the port that you're binding this to, which is the container port. So we know the container port will be 6 three, seven, nine, and this is where we bind our, so my laptop's port 6002. And if I do this, I forgot the radius here. So, and now if I do docker ps, let's actually clean this, docker ps again. Here you see the binding here, All right? So your laptops, 6000 port is bound to the containers 6379. So now let's do another thing and let's start it in a detached mode. So, like this. Let's check again. It's running again. And now I want to start the second container. Let's clear this again. So here you see it created a bunch of containers because uh, when I specified different options with the port binding, it actually created new containers. Um, that's why you see a couple of more here. So I'm gonna copy the image name with the tag for uh, .o minus p. So for example, if I were to do this now, and I would try to run the other Redis, the second Redis container with the same 
port on my laptop, I would get an error saying port is already allocated. So I can do 6001 and run it. Again, I'll run it in detached mode so that I can see port. And if I go over here and say Docker PS, I see that I have two different Redis versions running, both of them bound to different ports on my laptop and they, the containers themselves, listening to requests on the same port. Thanks for watching the video. I hope it was helpful and if it was, don't forget to like it. This is a video series, so I will create a new one every week. So if you want to be notified whenever a new video comes out, then subscribe to my channel. Um, if you have any questions, if something wasn't clear in the video, please post them in the comment section below and I will try to answer them. So thank you and see you in the next video.